welcome to the museum. I'm Cody. <laughs> I'm Satori. <laughs> and welcome back. Uh, we are uh, live from our museum. If you've never been here before, uh, again, I'm Cody. This Thank is Satori. You. I was going to say the label, the label right there is always <laughs> making me just look like a head when we start out. <laughs> a floating head, Madam Leota. Um, if you've never been here before, uh, Satori and myself, uh, we are paranormal investigators uh, with the Atlantic Paranormal Society, otherwise known as TAPS, uh, and also Rise Up, uh, Rhode Island Society for Examination of Unusual Phenomena. Uh, Ken is helping us in the background. He is the founder of that group, so we always appreciate his help every other week when we do this show. I saw Hi Katori. Hi Katori. That's Hi, both of us. Yeah, it's both of us. I mean, we do often get Sakoti. That's the big one. So, <laughs> eh, either one works for me. I guess. <laughs> uh, so we have an interesting show planned uh, tonight. So if you've never been here, uh, store myself. This is uh, not your average um, paranormal interview type show. Uh, we like to have fun, and sometimes it can get a little crazy. Uh, we end up learning uh, stuff about each other that we, we never really knew before, which is always interesting as well. We always get a good kick out of that. Uh, but every week uh, we pick an object, or I should say every other week because this is a bi-weekly show, we pick an object from the museum uh, to kind of highlight during the show, uh, which which we'll get into in just a moment. Uh, and every week we try to pick something uh, from each section of the museum so you kind of get an idea of, um, of what we have. Uh, so I guess the first thing that we'll do uh, to start off tonight's show is uh, to jump into this week's Object of the Week. All right. We are starting to get this down to too, down pat too quickly because it's three minutes in. You're all like, all right, here we go. It's like we're just banging it out it's right kind of, away. It's kind of uh, scary, but uh, we do scary. have a we have a surprise tonight, so that's why I'm jumping right right to this. So, <laughs> uh, so this week's object, uh, it's it's a small uh, object uh, in comparison to others we've showed. Here's a closer picture of it uh, for you, so you kind of get an idea of uh, all the detail in this. This is a handmade object. Uh, so there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to haunted items, which we're going to kind of get into tonight. Uh, and as you'll notice, that is a uh, religious item. Uh, so, uh, Satori and myself, uh, the way we handle uh, religion, that's a question that comes up a lot uh, when we're doing these types of programs and, and lectures and things like that, presentations, uh, is, you know, what religion are you? How do you approach the paranormal with, with religion? And while we deal with a lot of clients between the groups that we work with and the cases we deal with ourselves, uh, you know, we deal with a lot of clients from many different religious backgrounds. And I was brought up Roman Catholic and Satori is more spiritualist. Uh, <laughs> she, you know, does the crystals and sage and I'm more the prayer card you type person. You say it a lot nicer tonight than when you usually and, do. <laughs> I'm trying to be kind. It's a religious <laughs> show. So, um, so, uh, so this show, uh, definitely is, uh, you know, focusing on uh, not just one religion in particular. Uh, you know, we like to learn about uh, at least some of the primary religions here in the United States because our clients come from many different religious backgrounds. And, uh, you know, we deal when we come into a case uh, where a client is uh, having paranormal activity, um, you know, we feel out of respect and, you um, the success rate is if, if we uh, use whatever the client believes in, uh, usually the paranormal problem gets solved a little bit easier because it's what they believe in. Uh, we're under the assumption and, and what we subscribe to, our belief system is that uh, whatever you believe in, uh, that's what's going to work for you. Uh, no matter what religion you are, whatever you believe in, that's what you have to believe in when you're dealing with, with paranormal activity and uh, making it subside or uh, making your fear go away. So this object in particular uh, is a beautiful item that came from uh, Connecticut. And the story behind this item is uh, a gentleman who unfortunately was terminally ill, uh, donated this item before he passed away. And his story was every single week he would attend uh, church mass uh, multiple times, up to three or four times a week, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was very uh, devout to his religion, and he would attend multiple times a week. And we don't want to, I know we're saying was, the person sadly has passed on now. He has. Uh, and um, so when he became uh, unfortunately terminally ill, he no longer could attend uh, church service anymore. So his wife 
uh, you know, felt really bad for him. And uh, they made their home uh, basically a church. They did their best to, to have church at home. And his wife bought him a kneeler. Uh, if you ever been to a, a, a wake, uh, they usually place these in front of the casket. So you kneel down and say a prayer. You've probably seen one of these before. It's called a kneeler. And uh, basically she bought him one of these uh, pieces of furniture so he could kneel in his home and, and pray. Uh, well, he had a lot of time on his hands because he was stuck at home. Uh, so he started uh, wood carving. And uh, when he could no longer leave home, his his focus, uh, his, his pieces that he would choose to carve turned to religious items uh, because he wanted to fill his home and literally make it to a church. He wanted to feel comfortable around what he believed in. Uh, so one of the first items he carved uh, was the statue that we have here uh, on display. And he placed this and attached it uh, to the top of his kneeler. And he would uh, kneel down and pray to these statues. Now, uh, if you've ever heard uh, how our museum started, uh, the whole collection started with uh, a, a, a portrait of Christ that was passed down on my grandfather's side of the family and my mom's side. Uh, it belonged to my great-great-grandfather. Uh, here's a photo of that. And the stories are actually very similar. Um, with, with both of these items, which is why it really touched me. So what happened with the gentleman was, again, he was terminally ill. He was praying every single day to this, this statue that he made. And uh, he claimed that one day this overwhelming feeling of warmth fell over him. And uh, he claimed that the statue started to become animated. It started to talk to him and, and tell him that everything was going to be okay. He had nothing to worry about. His his transition was going to be very peaceful, and um, he would make it to the other side okay. And this really put him at peace. This made him feel uh, an overwhelming feeling of hope and and happiness. And um, uh, so he was so touched by this that before he passed away, he wanted to donate the item uh, to the museum because he heard that we have a traveling exhibit and and he wanted as many people uh, to see this as possible in the hopes that um, if somebody needed a message uh, of hope, uh, that he would, uh, that, that maybe they would get it by being in the presence of, of uh, this figure. So this was uh, definitely a touching story for him. Now, the reason why I found this so interesting is that that uh, portrait of Christ that I was telling you about that belonged to my great-great-grandfather, a very similar story. And this is the story that was told to me as I was growing up, which really uh, made my ears kind of perk up when this gentleman was telling the story. So my grandfather had this hanging in his bedroom. I remember it uh, clear as day. Uh, my grandparents lived below us on the first floor of the house, and I lived with my parents on the second floor. And uh, I remember I would go downstairs, and sometimes I would catch my grandfather praying to this, and I would always, you know, take a few steps back and wait till he was done. He would pray to it every single night. And um, I remember when he would be done praying, uh, he would, you know, take me over and, and tell me the story uh, that happened to his great grandfather that, you know, when he was on his deathbed, he was extremely scared to pass away. And again, he would pray to this painting or this, this portrait every single night. And he claimed that one night uh, the portrait started talking to him and telling him that everything was going to be okay. He had nothing to worry about. Very similar story uh, to what happened with the statue. And, um, once he uh, had that experience, he was no longer scared to pass away, and he was at peace. Uh, once he did pass away, he passed it down to his son, uh, who didn't have an experience with it. And then once he passed away, it was passed down to his son, which was my grandfather. And um, uh, my grandfather had a, a similar experience. He claimed that his mother was standing in the corner, and the, and the painting told him that he was, everything was going to be okay. Uh, and again, he had a peaceful transition. And then... Uh, the painting was donated uh, to me, and thankfully it hasn't talked to me yet, uh, which is good. But <laughs> I tell him not to look at it. <laughs> maybe, maybe there is something with these uh, religious artifacts that, um, if you think about it, there's just so much intention uh, that is being poured into these items. And uh, the gentleman that made this statue really put a lot of love and time into it. And uh, I truly believe that because of all of this intention and prayer uh, that this gentleman put into this figure, um, you know, maybe that's why it, it, it uh, was able to communicate to him and uh, 
make his faith a little bit stronger. And I'm not the only one that has experienced this. Cody has experienced similar things and people at the museum, but we have found that no matter what your religious belief is, when you are around this item, you just feel very warm. The only way that I can describe being around this item is you feel warmth, especially in the chest area and the stomach area. It just kind of feels like, I don't know, it's just like a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling whenever Absolutely. you're around it. Uh, so, like I mentioned in the beginning, this show isn't your typical interview type show, but we thought once in a while we like to get uh, an opinion uh, from some of our colleagues, and in this case, uh, a mentor. So, uh, this week we should jump into the mystery guest of the week. <laughs> All right, so this one is definitely a special one. Um, definitely, uh, this person has been a uh, a mentor to both of us, and definitely has given us some uh, some tips and a lot of advice on um, on collecting. He's been around uh, much longer uh, than us, and I yes. say that very respectfully. <laughs> and uh, we're not insulting. We're not just. <laughs> Well, maybe she is. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. He, would, he would blame it on me. This person would blame it on me. <laughs> so uh, let's welcome uh, Mr. John Zaffis and see what he has to say. All right. Hey, John. Hey, How you doing? How are you? Thanks for jumping on for a few minutes here. You got it. You got it. So, uh, so tonight uh, we were talking a little bit about um, some of the misconceptions on how uh, some people believe that all items uh, are demonic and bad, and and uh, you know at least, and you know I know a little bit about you know your collection, uh, but at least what we've experienced uh, that people have donated, uh, we have a section that's dedicated to religious items that people have donated, and this is just one of them that that we have on display tonight here that we've been talking about. And people have, uh, you know, at least with the uh, a few of the items we have in this religious category, people have talked about, um, you know, this this miraculous uh, experiences that they've had that have really uh, brought them closer to their belief system and their religion and and uh, things like that. So, do you think uh, that there is something to this? That you know, if people pray to uh, a certain picture, or a certain portrait, or a certain religious statue, that um, that that can you know, feed it with intention and feed it with life almost to make it um, kind of come alive and, and have some sort of communication with, with the individual. Oh, absolutely. Um, again, you know, with the power of prayer or, you know, humming, the power of anything, when you get that collective together and that energy can build, do I believe that it can associate itself with a religious item? regardless of the denomination, absolutely. Because here again, um, there isn't too many different organized religions that um, I don't have some type of items from, that you know things have occurred, things have happened. Um, I have a rosary bead, you know, uh, again, that the intent purpose was to, you know, recite the rosary and everything, but it was used in reverse and used to do things on a negative level. But on the flip end of it, also too, with a lot of the statues with things um, over the course of the years, people definitely believe in the power that a statue can literally bleed or oil can weep from it. And some people believe these things are truly miraculous. Now I have a, a religious statue uh, down in the museum that was donated to a church. Uh, several of them were. There was all kinds of activity. I didn't experience anything, but the statue was brought back, and I didn't think too much of it, but we started getting these oily spots in front of it. Wow. And, you know, it was quite amazing. You know, it did get documented. Uh, there's quite a few uh, photographs on it. People were touching it, and they were feeling it, and they were going, this isn't water. Now, at that point in time, too, I had a, a several of the kids from the University of New Haven uh, that were part of the uh, paranormal group, and they analyzed it, and they could not actually come up with what the substance was, but it had an oily substance to it. It had water in it, and it just stopped. Wow. And I look at this, again, from a perspective. Is that something miraculous that was happening from you know the individual because she was this very i call you know 
hardcore religious people holy rollers no matter what you know <laughs> what, what denomination it is but again those things occur and those things happen now um, I have uh, the little Mary statue from the haunting in Connecticut. Yep. Now, when uh, exorcisms are, you know, authorized and put into place and everything, there's a whole set of things that are done. And there was three priests that were involved with it. They were putting little relics all over and everything. And uh, during the course of it, you know, we had rumbling in the house. We had things that did literally occur. And then it got very quiet. And they were picking up and they were getting, wow, look at that black hair. I know, right? <laughs> the little bold spot there, huh? I had to do that. My butt's even still up in the air. It's not down to the ground like now. But anyhow, <laughs> guys tell me with my humor. So, you know, with that statue and everything, he, as he was retrieving the relics, we heard this screech come from the living room. Now, it was August, the fireplace wasn't lit, and it was up on the mantel. He would not touch it. We all walked into the room, and we looked, and the hands were melted off of this little Mary statue. Wow. Now, I consider this to be something demonic with this item. No, but I think it was trying to do everything that it could possibly do. And, again, you know, it was. it's one of those things... There it is. Wow. There it is. And if you look at the hands, it's the most bizarre, craziest thing. Yeah. To look at or, you know, to see. Yeah. And, you know, again, this had uh, gone missing for many, many years. We never knew what happened to it. And then Carmen and I were doing a lecture and she opened up her pocketbook and she took it out and she goes, I got something for you. And she took it out and I went, there's the Mary statue. Wow. And, you know, we often... You know, we're very curious on to what happened to it. And she said, you may have it and uh, put it in your museum. And wow, uh, it's been in here ever since. It's Again, it, it, it's the fact of it. I don't believe necessarily that it's something evil, but yeah. I think it's something that was getting a point across on how powerful the situation was with the power of everything that was transpiring and taking place. Wow. I, again, when I, when I look at the religious objects, I take so many different things uh, into consideration and just try to look at it. Uh, you know, could it be on a positive? Is there something that's tied in with it that's trying to get something across to us, you know, uh, from the power of the prayer, the power of the, you know, exorcism, deliverance, whatever you want to call it, that's being performed to be yeah. able to show the fact that something's occurring and happening, which brings me over to the fact, you know, again, that when some of these things occur and happen with the sightings of Mary and, you know, some of these uh, religious perspectives, things that happen <clears throat> and transpire, I think it's to build up of the positive that transpires and this is how it's coming through. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. And, and I think, you know, that was definitely, in my opinion, uh, with that statue. And I have a, a picture here in case anybody had trouble seeing the hands there. Um, you can definitely tell that, that they were melt. It looks like they were melted off, uh, which, which I think is uh, kind of shows a sign of, of power of fighting back. Like, like it, it tried to, it. yeah. You know, it it tried to it tried to take over it, and it fought back and won, uh, and and the belief system won. And you know, we were talking at the beginning of the show that it doesn't matter what what you believe in. Uh, you know, we're we're subscribed to the belief that uh, you could believe in in this water bottle, and if you believe in it wholeheartedly, that that this this can protect you, uh, then then it will. And, you know, we always tell our clients that, you know, uh, you know, Satori is more of the crystal and, and sage type person and, and more of the spiritualist type person. I was brought up Roman Catholic. And, um, and we feel like if we go into a case, um, you know, we, we feel we would have much better results if we use uh, whatever the client believes in rather what we believe in. We kind of have to uh, think that, you know, we leave our beliefs at the door 
and just follow whatever the client believes in and and um and you'll have better results now do you do you agree with that do you think that that um that following the client's belief system rather than your own would be more successful in in a case or uh or do you think something else well i take a combination of both okay uh, again that i've always stayed on that path of the simple fact if I'm working, you know, with somebody that's Jewish, you know, I'm not going to be bringing a priest in there. Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, exactly. Again, but on the flip end of it, to be perfectly honest with you, I've seen a couple of situations where people did a flip flop because they were, one was Catholic, one could be Jewish and you'd get the, the anyways, you get the whole situation going and sometimes things will work. But the basis of it, is the, the respecting of the client and the family mm -hmm. on what their belief systems are. We know, you know, uh, today organized religions aren't what they used to be. They're just not. I mean, right. the old timers, yes, they, they stick hardcore, you know, to their foundations, which is cool. You know, that, that's cool. <laughs> but, you know, a, as you evolve and, and we look forward, there's so many other things that come into play with things. So you just mentioned, you know, the simple fact of uh, crystals. When I had put the barn up, building the barn back in, when they went to put the foundation in, I put quartz crystal in the foundation in each corner. Wow. Big chunks of it. And as the building was going up and everything, there was different religious items that got put in the walls. and You know, so they were getting freaked out. So they were like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what is this guy doing? And, you know, uh, it, it, it's crazy, but I believe in, uh, in so many different things and look at so many different things, probably even more open now today, you know, than I used to. Yeah. Again, with, with this, I think things can happen in any type of a situation on a miraculous level. I do believe that can happen. Oh, you know, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing with uh, some of the different things I've witnessed. Now, there is a item that I have from a Jewish woman. Um, it was a little uh, statue. Yeah. And, you know, she was hardcore following it, the very old uh, traditional way. But she kept claiming that there was, you know, evil spirit attached to it, blah, 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 blah. And when we were there... You know, she got really, really intense and really wrapped up to this particular item where the item literally just flew right off the, the counter when we were talking to her. So, again, <laughs> you, you look, that's that's when you take the step back and we just look at it from the big picture. But, you know, again, wow. um, it's, it's important within our field uh, to look at absolutely everything in everything. Absolutely. I agree. I mean, yeah. I love, I love, you know, a lot of the different things in the different ceremonies. There isn't <laughs> anything I haven't participated, well, not participated, but been there, witnessed and watched. And I get, I get so intrigued and so wrapped up into so many of the aspects of these things that it, it's cool. It's oh, cool. absolutely. Yeah. So Tori and myself, the more we learned about other religions, um, because we all, if we come across a client that believes in something else that, you know, a different type of religion, uh, we try to learn a little bit about it. And we found that the more we, we learn uh, about these different religions, we find that there's a commonality between all of them. They all believe in a good and bad. And, and, and uh, you can definitely see how everything uh, kind of stems from something. Uh, now, another, we grabbed another object just to show you from our religious section here. And you'll probably recognize uh, what this is. Um, infant of Prague there. And this was donated by uh, an individual, uh, Joe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he donated to the museum because, um, so what happened when there was a uh, estate sale at a, a funeral home? Yes, and he had found this item in the rubble in this barn area of the funeral home and it was missing its hands. And he felt attached to it. So he had purchased it and brought it home and some weird things were happening, you know, light bulbs going out multiple times in a row, technology acting weird, things kind of breaking, um, things turning on by themselves. And um, what was strange was when he gave it to us, these were the claims along with it, but when we put it in the museum, it would start spinning 
backwards and it would face away from doorways. And we would always say this every time we did a presentation until a woman came into our most recent event and mentioned that the hands missing was a part of the story of the infant being found in rubble without hands. And you're supposed to change, you're supposed to replace them. Right. Fix them. And now this is a story we've heard a few times from people who have come to view some of our items uh, was that they had an infant uh, in, in their home or somebody in their family did and uh, the hands were missing uh, when when they got the the infant and uh, I guess there is this belief system that if the hands are missing bad luck bad luck uh, would happen and this one family uh, the mother was uh, so obsessed with trying to fix the hands on on the statue and uh, the daughter thought she was crazy. Like, why are you trying to spend all this money trying to fix the hands? And and uh, she says, I just need to do it. And then once she fixed the hands, I guess all of this great luck started happening. And she really felt blessed after that. And I think her heard exact this... words were, God was with my mother until the day she, she passed. And that's what she said after that. She was like, good things came to my mother every day until the day she passed after fixing those hands. Right. So we've heard similar stories um, <laughs> with this. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Where's he going? <laughs> we've we've heard similar stories uh, with these. Do you <laughs> does yours have hands? Missing. Missing. Isn't that odd? <laughs> now Isn't you got me interested odd? in this stupid thing, and it the, the hand yep. is missing. Yep, ours is missing too. Yep. I hear you. That's so strange, and it's the exact same spot. That is weird. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's holding, yeah, he's holding, and then the other hand is missing. Yep. Now, you just taught me something. I wasn't aware of that, but now you're freaking me out because that belonged to my grandmother. Really? Now, any of the religious objects that I have within my office, most of them are, wait a minute, let me dress them so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> and anyhow uh that as soon as you said that if you looked at my face i went okay yes. because i was like i'm remembering that one the one particular one because it was a couple of them she had yeah and that's the, just been in been with me for uh sorry i forgot to shut my phone off you're fine <laughs> but um the uh uh fact of that Watch this, watch this, it's my wife. All right. <laughs> I am doing a radio show, you're bothering me. I'll call you back. <laughs> Bye. She's up in Canada for a wedding. I stayed home. Oh, like, Put this over here. <laughs> you never know what will happen when John's on. I know. But yeah, it's crazy that the stories are so similar. And I mean, now we were told that if we replace the hands, put it in a doorway and it won't spin anymore and it'll bring good luck into that entryway into your home. And I'm just looking at this like, that's really strange. And then you just showed us your infant that has a missing hand in the same exact spot. So I'm wondering if this is just a so super common, like, you know, like a, a common right. thing, bad luck, you know, or right. like the breaking of the hands, you know? Right. And in the original story, uh, the first infant and, you know, don't quote me on this, but this is this is from what I remember. I believe the first one was brought over from Spain in 1955 to the small little um, mm -hmm. chapel, 1555, 15 1555, 15 15 15 I think it was. Yeah. I remember. And uh, it was brought over to this chapel and then the chapel was attacked. And uh, uh, it was robbed of all the jewels and, and, and all the religious figures were broken. Found in the and, um, and they ended up using this, this church as a warehouse for a few years. And then they end up uh, finding. Okay. Okay. okay, but thanks. Okay, um, sorry, guys, go ahead. So, so then they end up finding the uh, the infant uh, wedged in a corner, missing its hands, and um, and you know they ended up going through different sculptors, and the hands kept falling off until they had uh, what they call a miraculous experience. Uh, they believe an angel came and fixed the hands because uh, this gentleman just came out of nowhere, uh, fixed the hands, and then disappeared without payment. So they believe an angel came and fixed the hands. And then after that, everything started to, you know, come back and the church started to rebuild. And uh, so maybe there is something with this hand thing. You know, maybe I'm, not, there is. I'm not really sure. So maybe we should try having the hands <laughs> fixed. Happens if you're like, well, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, again, I remember hearing something. 
about that, but I never really gave it too much thought till we were just talking about it. Yeah. So, so that, that's uh, that's pretty cool and that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So now we always ask, um, we always ask if if somebody has one of these, does it have hands? And uh, if not, are you having problems? Are you having you know bad luck or something happening with it? And usually they say, yeah, something something's going on. So, um, but thank you so much for uh, for your input. We thought we'd uh, we'd bring you on and and uh, and see what you have to say. And because... if we're ever so lucky enough, hopefully we can see your collection. I know, point. right? <laughs> I, I, hopefully, I can see your collection. <laughs> I know. <we> need... <laughs> I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> <laughs> anything? Anything else you want to talk about, or anything? No? That's that's pretty much it. You answered all our questions. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you have any questions for John? I uh, know. I'm just really happy to see you. It's been a while. It hey, is. So it's yeah. always good to see Beanie and Hoss Kid. <laughs> it is. It's Thank always you great. So much. All right, guys. Take care. Good to see you, John. Thank you so All right, much. Bye. All right. See ya. All righty. So that was uh that was great, and it's always good to get John's input on. Um, I love John Zappa. On some things, yes. Yeah, so John's been. Um, there's another collector there, Timothy Shaw. Tim Shaw. Yeah, Mr. I, Shaw. Heard, I saw him say that I was awesome in the chat. Just you? Yeah. Well, wow. I think so. I'm gonna I remember know. that. <laughs> I'm going to remember that. But yeah, it's great to have Mr. Zephis on. Um, he's always very kind and very supportive. And he's always given us lots of good advice and ideas for the museum. And I'm kind of glad we not really stumped him, but surprised him a little bit because he had an object very similar to ours. I know. It's hard to stump Mr. Zephis. It is very hard to it's do hard. that. It's but, hard. Um, but yeah, maybe if you have one of these statues uh does it have the hands and um if it doesn't uh is have you found it moved on its own or, or cause any maybe strange things like luck things and whether you think it's actually that item or not happening yeah, around you absolutely uh so it's always interesting I, I i there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to this and whenever we can address them um it's always a big plus uh so i think right now is a good time to thank our uh, patron members. Of course. Uh, so uh, without them, uh, this show definitely wouldn't be possible and the museum itself uh, wouldn't be possible. You know, we have uh, uh, a lot of things that we have to take care of. And uh, some of these things are extremely old. And, um, and, you know, we need to give them the proper care because, you know, we've been nicknamed this foster home for haunted items. And um, we want to take as best care uh, of our items as possible because we have objects just like this one that was donated by people uh, to keep their memory alive or to tell their story. And we do have items that have a lot of, you know, breakage to them that came to the museum like that, or maybe they're super fragile, or they have case, you know, situations or activity that is more on the dangerous side where we have to kind of plan our uh, arrangement of where it should be and how it should be contained due to that. So um, with that in mind, so we've been able to, with the help of the patrons, get things that we need for these objects to really take care of them or to make sure that we're taken care of of taking care of them right and the people that support the museum we do our best to um to you know give something back so um you know for one thing is uh, this show ends at uh, 10 o'clock and then at 10 15 we start up our patreon bonus show mm -hmm. uh which is only for uh, museum members only and um and we uh, show a new object that has come into the museum or or um, something of that nature. And, and we always try to update uh, our members first uh, before uh, the general public because, you know, they deserve it. They've helped us out. And, um, and you know, we really appreciate it. And we do have to say some of our tiers are very popular. I don't know if we have room in certain tiers, but we are thinking about adding some new really creative tiers if anybody wants to become a member. And we are. Community. And, you know, my favorite one, um, that we have plenty of room on is is uh, the case file of the month. So we send a uh, case file from one of our museum items, and this is the case file for the object that we're showing tonight. 
And um, once a month, we go over it live uh, on our uh, private Facebook group, and we get different input from uh, individuals and and um, and see what they have to say. And sometimes that really opens our eyes uh, to some different possibilities. Yeah, and I'm not sure if my box here is full or not. I think there might be one room because somebody went up. But if there is, we, I'd love to see you in that also. I kind of include some things that I really like, crystals, you know, incense, different items that I feel may really help you and a personalized one card reading in your box every month. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, um, feel free to contact us also. Yep. So every tier you get something sent to you every single month, which mm -hmm. is, which is, you know, our little way of trying to give back. And uh, if you do join, you can go back and see all of the previous posts. You can only join from, if you want to join from one month and look at everything and then unsubscribe, that's perfectly fine too. You won't, you won't uh, hurt our feelings no. at all. Uh, so now we're going to move into our regularly scheduled uh, programming. Okay. And uh, which always uh, kind of can get a little um, fun, maybe a little rambunctious, a little yeah. <laughs> interesting. And feel free if you have any uh, questions or you know how it works, uh, feel free to uh, send them into the chat. And um, if we mine. see them, we'll, uh, we'll pull them up and, um, um, and read them. So let's right. jump into the next segment here. Let's get into it. <laughs> Normal couple questions. So for people that do not know this segment, Cody and I ask each other some really strange questions, whether they are about the paranormal, just really random questions, or about the object or scenario. Um, so we'll ask each other these questions. We'll answer honestly to each other with you guys there to see and hear, um, get our firsthand reactions to hearing some strange answers and, and so forth. Awesome. All right. All right. Ladies first. Me? Yeah, you always go first. Okay, so this question this question is about an I you know, the kind of items we have right now for this show. So let's say you notice a statue or item you are incredibly drawn to. You feel the need to be around this item constantly, all right? Okay. Yep. One day this the item comes to life and begins talking to you and only you. So my first part of this question is what do you think the first thing this item would say to you? If it came to life and was talking to you, what would you imagine this item saying to you first? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Um, all right. Let me think here. Huh? Um, it'd probably ask, you know... <laughs> why i swear so much that's probably one, th one thing that would say. that's true i <laughs> that's probably one thing um foul mouth i could just no. imagine um it would probably compliment on the wonderful singing that happens every time i take a shower because i'm sure if it's coming to life it's to compliment you probably I, right. you know, I, I think i have a i good... just i'm making sure that that's <laughs> all right um yeah i don't know that's that's probably about it what would you do if this item came to life was talking to you what would be the first thing you'd do I'd probably you? start recording it because you wouldn't believe me. I'd probably get put in a nut out if I, if I told you that. <laughs> but it would only be talking to you. It wouldn't be talking to me. It's only talking to me. Yeah. So if you're just randomly, I'm not telling anybody. I am not, not telling, telling anybody. You wouldn't even tell me. I don't. Yeah, maybe. I would if I'm you. standing there and it's talking, and I'm and I don't hear it, but you do. Would you tell me honestly that this is happening? Yeah, I would tell you. I don't know okay. if I would tell anybody else. I might say they might think I'm a little cuckoo. Crystal says nice hair, or at least that's what I would want to hear. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. I All didn't right. say it. Your turn. My turn? Yeah. All right. All right. So um <laughs> I'm still I feel the stat the item coming to life and complimenting you is what you think would be the first thing. All right. So this is uh kind of on, on the same page as yours. Uh, but if, if you were spirit, right, trying to... It's always, if you were dead, that's always your question. <laughs> I didn't say that. Me. I said if you were spirit. If you were spirit um, and you were trying to um, reach out to um, me from the other side or somebody, you know, that you're trying to contact, um, keep in mind, I can't see or hear you. What are you going to do to let me know that it's you? What is something that you would do? But you can't see or hear. I you. can't see or hear you. So that would only give me the option of like moving something. Moving something. Um. I get yeah, I guess, yeah, moving something. I would, or could I make things happen? Like you smell or, it's, you know, something yeah, like I, that? Yeah, I can't, I, the only thing I can't do is see or hear you. Okay, so I would push items that I normally have on me or around me 
towards you. So like you'd randomly go go to bed or something and be like, why are there so many rocks in my bed? <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> or you would come. <laughs> that is something you would You'd be like, do. why are there crystals in my pocket regenerating every I time? I would know that was you every single you time. You would. You would too. Um, or you would just smell overpowering like incense smells. I don't. I don't know if I, yeah, maybe instead, but the I rocks would definitely, right the away, crystals and rocks. Would right, be the, oh yeah. That right would away. be it. Yeah. You'd be like, why did they just keep, why are they always in my pocket? I don't even collect Especially if things. you throw one at me, I'll know what you and I Oh, I'm sh that's exactly my attitude. <laughs> All right. So my question. Yeah. All right. What is your favorite theory or belief about the metaphysical world? This doesn't have to be, you know, a religion you subscribe to or anything. Yeah. Um, but a theory, story, or idea you maybe heard or learned or kind of come up with that you really support or think is true. You know, if there's anything like, I believe the other side is full of rainbows and unicorns. Like, you know, you have some belief that you have developed, heard, or learned that you really go, okay, I think that might be a thing. Um, definitely animals. Uh, animals being able to sense spirit. Um, much better than um a human I, I definitely subscribe that's one thing that i definitely believe in do you think do you have um, any specific ideas about the next life the next transition any ideas of like what it's like what or? it's like yeah well i would like to I, I like to think that um you you know you move on to and what we've experienced you know from from our investigations and stuff like that i'd like to believe that uh you move on uh sort of to a very similar place um that we live on now um uh, but a lot less problems um because you know my belief system is you know if you believe a good and a bad you know like like if you have a belief system you believe a good and a bad negative positive um i believe that and this is just my belief i believe earth is the negative interesting so it's like this is the learning where you go through all your obstacles. Kind yeah, of point. and I think if if um, if you believe that you move on to a, a better place, if if you've done your good deeds or something like that, uh, then you move on to that next realm. If not, you get stuck here in the bad place because there's a lot of bad things that happened on on this planet. You know, there's a lot of good things too. But interesting, I think I'd rather move on to the next place than be stuck i think the next here. place might be better than here yeah i guess i could yeah. i'm not in any rush to leave here that's for sure but. <laughs> interesting and i would love to hear everybody else's opinions also your turn cool oh my turn yeah all righty um one famous paranormal case that you know that's really been documented there's been a bunch of them uh if you could be on the original team that first stepped foot inside of the case which location would it be which which case the original case the original case the where it all began the first stepping foot over the threshold to investigate which case which team do you want to be a part of why do i have to be part of the team or could i just kind of watch it and be there yeah yeah you just be there just the first okay. you are the first person through the door to start it hasn't become famous yet but i want to see it all go down with those people yeah 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 you can just kind of be a, a fly the on farm the on round top road I would love to see the original, everybody there, you know, all these people, not just Ed and Lorraine, but everybody that was involved during that time, you know, Keith, Carl, everybody at that time yeah, period right. and see what happened and actually see the case as it's happening instead of just hearing the stories. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, when you have these, uh, a lot of these more famous cases, um, you know, it's a lot of puzzle pieces from different sources. And then you kind of have to put them all together and then you get the big story. Uh, so if you were there from the beginning and got to see this unfold, um, you know, you'd have you'd be a very special person because you got to see it all with your own eyes. Exactly. A lot of these famous cases, there's a lot of different investigators that come in and out and and uh, that's how the story builds. So that'd be really cool. But I would want to see I want to be there before the investigators get there to experience what happened to make them call. That's interesting you know? too. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Should we move on? Are we going to move on to our next segment? Are we going to sit? No, you, you can do one, one more, more question. All yeah. right. If you had the opportunity to talk to anyone that has died that is not Elvis, who would it be and why? I just wanted to take Elvis out of the mix because you would say Elvis. I would. Um, 
Dang. Yeah. Um, geez, that's a good one. One person has passed away that I would like to talk to. Um, that's a tough one. I would want to talk to a historical figure or something. You know, somewhere there may be a lot of rumors about that so, person or yeah, that situation. Yeah, that's somebody I would I would pick somebody who um, had a uh, a lot of uh, rumors around him where the story wasn't um, really straight. Or somebody that did something so amazing where I'm like, how did you do that in a time that it was so hard to do something? Like yeah. Um, I don't know. I know. You would probably talk to Hamilton, right? You know, yeah. Or maybe an activist or somebody in a time where it was, you know, it was so hard to get rights yeah. for certain groups of people. And it's like, how did you, knowing that it was risky to do that, how did you go about doing that? I mean, that? I could think of so many people that I'd want to talk to, but, you know, I, I'm trying to, like, I, I, I I'll would. I'll just leave it with yeah, you. Yeah, I would like, I would, I would have to think about that for a while because I want to pick the right person. Interesting. But I'd pick a lot of different singers and stuff. I love music, so I'd love to talk to people about that stuff. All right, mm -hmm. my last question. Let's I guess so. Um, okay. Uh, this is a would you rather question. You have right. two options here. All right. Okay. You have to choose one. Um, would you rather live for 90 years and be given $100 million or would you rather live forever and be given no money? I wouldn't want to live forever. I would not want to live forever. All right. So you're taking 90 because years. Because I kind of subscribe to the idea that here is very tough compared to over there. All right. So well, you better share I would the money. live to 90 and get it. Yeah. Yeah. I would share. Yeah. You share the money with me? Would you be there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. That was fun. Um, so yeah, we always learn something new about each other in that one, um, which is always interesting. So, all right, let's move on right to the, um, right to the next segment. You want to all do right. that? You ready? Yep. This is all you. All right, so this segment is where I kind of mention something that's more metaphysical, more spiritual, or um, things like that. So crystals, herbs, um, a belief system, things things that, you know, are more spiritual in that way. Um, so I'm kind of doing two things that are smaller put together, if in a sense. Like I'm going to do two different things, but I'll, I'll move into the second thing. So first off, I wanted to talk about fate versus destiny. Now, this is a very interesting topic to me because I do so many readings, tarot and, and oracle readings and things like that. And a lot of people ask me or end up asking me, what's the difference between fate and destiny? Is is Which one is more a thing, if that makes sense? So I kind of just want to give you guys, you know, exact definitions, my interpretations and, and see what you guys believe. If you believe that there's only one or the other, or if you believe it's kind of a mix of both. So first off, fate. Fate refers to a predetermined course of events that is inevitable. So they believe fate is something that was already planned in the cards for you. Fate means that it was something before you, you know, even started your path, your path was chosen for you. You can't change it. Um, it's, um, it's associated a lot of the time with the workings of higher powers. And it kind of gets a negative rap because some people like to say if anything, um, negative happens or they have a pessimist pessimistic mindset hmm. they'll say that it was fate it had to happen and you know so they kind of curse fate if that oh, makes wow. sense um destiny destiny refers to a predetermined course of events that can be shaped by an individual so this is the belief that the choices you make can alter or um amplify or bring down what was planned for you so if let's say you miss you gonna blow a stop sign or something and you get in an accident that had to happen. You made that choice to go through that to make that happen because something is going to happen from there. Or oh, wow. you decided, okay, I'm going to take the, you know, the red cup instead of the blue cup. There was a reason for that. You made the choice, or a really personal decision. You know, things happen. You made the choice to do it, and that alters your future, your your destiny. So um, they believe that it's not really negative. It's something that you can pave. So it's a more positive wrap with that. Um, so I'd like to see what other people believe. If you believe it's more fate or destiny, something's already planned out for you, or you have more of a choice to make something happen. Um, my personal 
my personal belief on this is it is kind of a mix of both. I believe everything happens for a reason and there are certain things that have to happen in your life to make certain things happen. Um, but I also follow the belief that if you make a certain choice that can alter your path, that can make certain things happen to get there sooner, later, or it might even alter where you're supposed to be. So I think it's kind of a mix of both. I, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I definitely think, um, there are definite certain things that uh, happen for a reason, and mm -hmm. um, and you're meant to uh, cross that in life. And mm -hmm. I definitely think there are things where you make a choice, and and um, sometimes you have to uh, trust your gut. Uh, but sometimes people don't do that, and they end up, you know, maybe in the wrong direction. So some people believe in one or the other, or both. So I'd like to hear what you guys think on that. Also, I just want to bring the attention before we change topics that the summer solstice is coming up June 21st, which is also known as Litha to a lot of more pagan um, belief systems. What is it? Litha. Litha. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, a lot of people during this time that are more spiritual, more pagan, things of that nature, they will, you know, make fires, they'll spend time in nature, they will have herbs and, and do certain rituals and ceremonies. Oh, wow. um, it's also supposedly the longest, believed, the longest day of the year, I think. The 21st is going to be the longest summer day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's the summer solstice. So I hope you guys have a great time. And I wonder what you guys are doing for that day. Wow, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, if, you, if you're just joining us, uh, be sure to subscribe to uh, Dead Air Full Spectrum or whatever platform you're watching this on. Uh, there's a lot of great content on uh, the Dead Air channel, a lot of different shows. Uh, you have uh, Monday Night Monsters, which I believe is taking a hiatus for the summer, but there's a lot of great episodes you can go back and watch and extremely they tune strange. into Extremely Strange. Yeah, that's a good one. A lot of cool episodes if you're into... Um, uh, strange stories and things like that and then on sunday you have um uh the big show with ken and george uh which is always a great uh interview type show a lot of great uh guests last week's guest was uh, michelle belanger it was a great show i i, I loved um i love that episode um sundays okay making sure yeah. i think you said mondays on accident so oh I did i make sure yeah uh so uh so a lot of great content and then other videos a lot of cool 360 <laughs> videos that have been uh uploaded uh recently which is great so if you've never been to like the conjuring house or the pain house uh you can visit there virtually which is which is really cool so a lot of great content on there already and a lot of great content coming so let's jump into our uh final segment here All uh, right. this is one of my favorites because uh we get to use some props Let's do it. Yeah. All right, I'm getting the questions out. So for people that don't know this segment, this is called uh, Paranormal Guess Who. So we kind of play a more who's more likely to, who would, you know, what would you do in this situation? Who's more this, who's more that? Yeah. So um, it's a fun game. And without looking at each other's paddles, we have little paddles here. Um, We'll choose who we think would or be the most likely in certain right. situations. Okay, so I have a couple. If people in the chat want to ask questions, we might have a time for a couple. Yeah. Um, but the first question is from Crystal Booth, our patron. Right. And she said, this is a not paranormal question, and there's a paranormal one after that. So who is most likely to try a new food first? I am very – I'm not picky, but I'm very cautious with trying I love. Things. I love trying new things, If you know. Whenever I travel somewhere, I like to try, you know, the local uh, food, you know, whatever they're known for. And I love, I love trying stuff. Who, okay. Would you call me picky if I'm, I don't eat seafoods. I don't you eat. Don't, you don't eat seafood. Uh, I don't eat like to, mushroom. I have a texture thing. With you have foods. a texture thing. Um, you like to eat things that you know that you like. <laughs> okay. So maybe I am a little picky. I would not necessarily try something without yeah. knowing first. So paranormal, who would most likely, oh. Who would be the most excited over a new location? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm going down the middle on the. Yeah, that's a tough one. We both get excited. We Cody really won't do. shut up the entire time there, if that makes sense. We really do. <laughs> so I think he gets a little more excited verbally when it comes to it. Well, I also take a lot of pictures and walk around. You do. I cannot so. find you because you'll be taking pictures somewhere. I love taking pictures. All right, patron Amanda Grimes, who would be the most likely to skydive? Oh, that's easy. I tried getting her to do it. The only thing I've done is like uh, the tube, you know, you get in the tube and you flop He around. did. And for people on our Patreon, uh, our patrons, I might post some photos from that in the Patreon chat. Are you now. really? I might now. Um, I'm terrified of heights. So if you want to know one crazy fear of mine, I am terrified of heights. So I could not, I can't get on a plane without crying. 
<laughs> so I'm very afraid of heights. Well, apparently, if you want to see me flopping around in a tube, uh, <laughs> Patreon is the place to be. <laughs> it's going to be a party. Um, all right. And deep sea dive is part of an investigation. You, because I'm afraid of what's... I, I yeah, love the ocean, no. but I'm afraid of not seeing everything around me and have something happen. Yeah. No, I would throw on a scuba tank and, and go dive. Of course you would. Um, Raven, patron, who would most likely want to live in a known haunted house, like a well-known haunted house? Uh, it's probably both of us, but maybe her more. Uh, I think I would get very excited about that. I don't know. I, I make spirits my friends. I'm, I'm, I'm somebody <laughs> who's definitely under the belief, uh, like I wouldn't do an EVP session in my own house. Yeah. So, um. But I'm the kind of person that walks around and I'm like, hi guys, I'm leaving a gift, this rock. I shouldn't say in my own house, in my living space. Yes, I guess. I guess, but I think a haunted house would be really cool to live in. All right. Patron Laura, who's the most technologically savvy? That's easy. Who would be the first to use the latest great piece of equipment? That's easy. I can't work my cell phone. That's why I keep looking down because I'm trying to figure out how to work it. So I'm not tech savvy at all. Well, let me tell you, uh, I used to only rely on equipment and things like that. But once I met you, I have definitely opened up to the more uh metaphysical mm -hmm. side of things and um i definitely don't rely on equipment as much anymore yeah i, I guess definitely I'm, don't. i guess i'm rubbing off on uh, him. definitely more to the basics just a recorder and <laughs> and um i did go wow i forgot about that i bungee jumped. you have a horrible memory i don't know you i didn't know you went bungee jumping i forgot all about it yeah. I, think I feel that like half your life you just forgot about <laughs> That had to be in Virginia. It it had to be. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. All right. Well, that's cool. I've done that. That's wow. probably the second closest. The show has already pretty much wrapped up. It has. It has. It and went by so fast. Hopefully um, you enjoy this. Like I said in the beginning, this isn't your usual um, type of you know paranormal show. Uh, we like to do things a, a bit different. And um, we like to you know tell some stories and have some fun. And, uh, you know, still, re re you know, retain that respect uh, that, that you need towards the object. And um you know we like to have a good time but if you want more if you if you want to um you know see some more um content and see our faces a little more often uh definitely check out uh the patreon uh platform that we have set up uh you can join support us and see a lot of more content that uh is not available uh not available publicly and uh you'll get something sent to you every month depending on uh, which tier you join you can join for one month Two months, three months, however long you want to join, uh, and um, and check out the content, and you'll be supporting the museum at the same time. And if you guys don't really want to be part of the Patreon community, we also sometimes offer certain um, things for certain months and holidays and such that we will promote on our page. Also. Yep, yep. And uh, also be sure to follow us on uh, our Facebook page. We do uh, sometimes sporadically go live on there if we're at a cool place or we have something cool to show you. Um, but um, but yeah, uh, events, you know, we usually post events on there. And of course, our website, paranormalcouple.com, uh, is also uh, the place uh, if you want to see if we're coming to an area near you. I know uh, upcoming, we uh, the next big event we have is the New Jersey Para Unity Expo. Yeah. And um, after that, I know we're going to, we're going uh, to Michigan, Michigan Paracon. Uh, we have Indiana booked. Indiana. Uh, the Bell Fort Mansion, Wayne. Fort mm -hmm. Wayne, Indiana. Uh, and uh, a few a couple other, other places. things. I think we're working out things in Pennsylvania too. A couple things. We have a con in Pennsylvania. Yes. Oh, that's also coming Scranton. up. Scranton. Uh, it's called Transcendent. Uh, all the information is on paranormalcouple.com. Click on the events page, and uh, that's updated every week uh, with new events and uh, and things like that. Thank you guys so much for watching and having a great time with us. And stay in touch. Absolutely. And um, and uh, if you have any questions. Uh, be sure to reach out to us. Send us an email. Send us a message. And uh, we will uh, be sure to um, respond. All right. <laughs> All right. See you later.